Hey everybody, this is my 125 gallon native tank and we're trying to sort of sneak up on it although I'm not doing a very good job. You can tell by the activity that the fish already saw me walk over here. But I wanted to get a little bit of a look at it with it being what we'll call in its natural state uh, with me not standing here because you can already see they're getting prepped ready for dinner. So this is the first uh, public look at my new fish i have posted a video on patreon already in fact i actually posted a video of us going out and catching these fish on my patreon page uh, but this is my first public uh showing of my new fish and i wish it was a little more exciting to be honest with you i put i want to say six sunfish in here and a couple things right away that struck me. Let me try to get over here so we get a little less glare on it. The first thing that struck me was the relative size of these shiners. These shiners are getting so thick bodied and they're getting so tall that when I put them in there next to these sunfish, or I should say I put the sunfish in next to the shiners, I mean, you can hardly tell them apart uh, at first glance. And then, of course, the other thing, and again, I'm not really sure what I was expecting when I put these sunfish in here, but I really thought the sunfish were going to sort of be off to one side of the tank doing their sunfish thing, and then the minnows would, you know, and the chubs would be down here doing their chub thing, and it would just give the tank some, some diversity and some interest. There'd be groups of fish moving around, and, and that's not what happened at all. The fish came in, they just went right into one school, and again, you've got to really kind of look closely to even tell that I've added new fish. And despite the fact that I took seven, no, five fish out of here, I've actually got more bio load in there now than I did before. So... The one upshot is that my tilapia, and of course right now he's not cooperating since I'm going to talk about him but the one upshot is that I have noticed that my tilapia also comes out of its corner uh, especially when I'm not here leaning on the tank and talking real loud in front of it and all that but the tilapia has come out and has been schooling with the sunfish so I don't know if it just sees fish that are similar size or what but I'm really happy to see that the tilapia is out and about. And of course, you know, as I said, with me standing right here, that's not the case at the moment. But when we snuck in, you could see that the tilapia was making its way down to that end of the tank because it had been down here with all of these fish that are just sort of lingering around. And this is all they do all day is just kind of hang out and sit in the current. And of course, when I come in, they start getting active because they know uh, there's a pretty good chance that food might be coming in. I really like this shiner here. He's got these sort of orange fins with the black tips on them. And he's just so thick. I can't believe how big they're getting. Uh, I wish we could get some better lighting on the sunfish. I will try to do that in an upcoming video. I really don't have time tonight. Uh, but these fish have been in here for a few days now. So I did want to get some public video out there. I've just had a really hectic day today. And this is going to be about all I can really do as far as getting some video out there. But like I said, I did want to get... Uh, my first public look out here at my new sunfish. So let's try to slide these lights forward just a little bit right now and see if that doesn't bring a little more light to the forward side of the tank. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> a little bit of swallow went down the wrong way. So with the sunfish, I tried to find ones that were really pretty. Uh, my original goal was to catch maybe... 10 or 15 small ones about you know silver dollar size and it just wound up not being that way at all and ones like maybe this size were the ones that were small and of course when you're out at a big pond fishing and you catch fish that seem small they're always way bigger when you get them home and put them in an aquarium even 125 gallon aquarium so as i said when i brought home fish like this thinking that that was a fairly small one it still turned out to be fairly significant in size. And then some of the larger ones actually had really pretty markings on them, so I brought them back as well. One of them, I believe it was this one, had really, really deep blue coloration on it. And a couple of them were just plain old bluegills that had that really pretty blue color. But now that they're here in the 
uh, aquarium, most of their color seems to have just washed out and they just seem all faded. This one right here is really interesting. I really like the patterning on this one. It's very different than the others. It almost looks like the patterning on a crappy, but I know it's not. I know that's not a crappy. Uh, very interesting patterning though. It's gotten a lot paler since it's been in the tank. It was much more distinct when I first caught it. In fact, I thought it was so interesting. That's the reason that one came home with me. No green sunfish this time. So hopefully we won't have to worry about that. This one has these sort of blotches and splotches on it. That's the one with the really blue uh, jawline and the really vibrant blue colors. So I don't know if that one's gotten beaten up against the rocks and its scales have been knocked off or it's diseased. You know, that's the other downside to doing this. As much as I might have fun with this and as interesting as this may be, it's not out of the question at all that I have brought uh, disease home into the tank um, you know, from the wild. Uh, I will do a video here in the very near future. Every time I catch fish and bring them home, or more importantly, when I release fish back into the wild, I always get a slew of comments about uh, the legality of doing that and whether I should be or shouldn't be or whether I'm allowed to or not allowed to. And I'm still not 100% sure of how all those laws work and, of course, where you are and what state you live in and all that kind of stuff always makes a big difference when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, but we will have a talk about that. That's an interesting topic, and it's one I've thought about a lot over the years, and I've gotten so many comments about it. And I've always just decided that was one of those topics I just didn't want to go there. You know, I just really didn't want to go into that um, whole topic. But... I will, because we've done this a few times now, and we're probably going to be doing it a few more times, and so we may as well just address the whole uh, idea of the legality of that. And so that will be a video coming up here in the very near future, but uh, long and short of it, and far as the disease aspect of it, the concern about me releasing any disease back into the wild after it's been here in one of these, you know, tropical-type environments... Um, as I was saying, in this case, I'm far more worried about bringing disease into my tank than I am about putting disease from my tank back into uh, the natural world or the native environment. So that's not a concern of mine. Uh, what is entirely possible to happen is I could wipe out all of my uh, fish that are already in the tank. I could lose my pleco. I can lose my tilapia. I can lose all these minnows I've spent so many years growing. It's happened before. And I don't see any reason why it wouldn't happen again. It's just going to be a matter of the luck of the draw, whether or not I bring home any contaminated or sick fish, whether I catch it in time, depending on what the illness is. Uh, there's a lot of factors. But again, the chances of me bringing something home are far, far greater than the chances of me uh, trans transmitting something out of my tank and back into the wild, especially since if I even suspected that I had some issue in my tank, I would not dream of taking any of those fish and putting them back out in the wild if I thought they were infected with something. So that's not a concern of mine. Again, my concern is the other way around. So make sure you're subscribed and you won't miss anything I got coming up. We will be doing more video on this tank. I'm not overly happy about it, if you couldn't tell already, so it probably won't be too long before we're making some more uh, changes again, and then that way if you're subscribed you won't miss any of that, and of course with the weather getting nicer we'll be doing more outdoors videos uh, if you do enjoy my outdoors videos. And on that note also, if you do enjoy my outdoors videos, you might want to check out my Patreon page, I do put a lot more uh, outdoorsy kind of stuff over there than I do here on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in the outdoors kind of stuff, a little behind the scenes stuff, uh, all sorts of odds and ends, uh, go over on my Patreon page. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can check that out. In the meantime, as I keep saying, make sure you're subscribed and then that way you won't miss any of the videos I'm posting over here. Got plenty coming up on this tank, plenty coming up on all my other tanks. You don't want to miss any of them. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you real soon in the next one.